Are you an established small business owner or aspiring entrepreneur? Would you like professional advice to help your business grow and succeed? Well, look no further. The Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center is the territory's number one resource to move your business forward. Enjoy no-cost advising, low-cost training, and technical assistance from experts in both the public and private sectors. The VISBDC is nationally accredited and sustained by the University of the Virgin Islands and the U.S. Small Business Administration. Visit us at our locations on St. Thomas, St. John, or St. Croix, and follow us on social media at VISBDC. For easy access to all our training and networking events, be sure to join our newsletter and download the VISBDC app. The Virgin Islands Small Business Development Center, here to help your business start, grow, and succeed. Good morning, everyone, and welcome to the VISBDC's hosting of Establishing and Repairing Your Credit in collaboration with First Bank VI. Today's webinar continues the VISBDC's focus on April being Financial Literacy Month. We have put together essential training opportunities that educate both entrepreneurs and small business owners in getting their personal and business finances in order. This session focuses on the credit process how to improve your credit score and the overall impact your score has on your financial future. These tips will guide you in the right direction towards healthy credit. Allow me to introduce today's lead presenter, Ms. Pearl Spensley. Pearl Spensley has over 12 years of experience in the financial sector, working in various roles within consulting and banking industries. She recently transitioned to commercial sales as a business relationship manager at First Bank VI. Pearl also serves as a treasurer and the board of two local nonprofit organizations. Here's a friendly reminder to put your questions in the chat and they will be addressed by the presenter either directly in the chat or later during the question and answer segment. A copy of this presentation will be attached to the email involving the um, poll survey after the training. Please take a few minutes to let us know how we are doing. Ms. Pearl Spensley, without further ado, the floor is yours. Thank you, thank you so much, Sharika, and uh, good morning to everyone. Happy Friday. Um, thank you so much uh, for joining me today. I'm particularly excited about today's topic, uh, establishing and repairing credit. Uh, one, uh, because uh, one, I love to talk. Uh, two, um, this is something that I have personally gone through. Um, you know, I started like most of you with no credit. I've had bad credit. Uh, I've repaired my credit, um, and then it's 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 fluctuated, um, and so you know I've I've gained a, a form of um, of mastery on how to you know either grow your credit or um, you know uh, fix it uh, in some way or another. So as I'm moving through this slide. Um, the first thing that we want to address are the five C's of credit. So we're not necessarily going to talk about the five C's today, but it's important to, uh, to talk about them, to understand um, why they are important. So the first one, capacity, um, is it, can, you, can you take on more debt, right? Or, or uh, can you handle your loan payment? That's going to be a big one uh, as you move through uh, your your credit process. Um, the second C of credit capital um, is uh, is is do you know uh, the size of of the down payment that that you're going to uh, to have to make, whether it's a mortgage or uh, or, or purchasing a car or or you know getting a, a small business loan, and uh, can you make uh, that that down payment? Um, so so that's very important. Uh, the third C of credit condition, uh, really, why? Why do you need financing? Um, is it a want? Is it a need? Is it is it for an investment? Um, 
and and do you understand the terms associated um, with that with that loan with that that credit facility uh, that you're requesting? Uh, read through your your terms and conditions. Uh, number four, collateral. Collateral is is if you're having a secured um, you know uh, credit uh, facility. What what are the assets that you are going to uh, to put down uh, or or willing to put down? And finally, uh, character. This is the reason we're here today. Uh, it's 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 character. Um, you know your your scores will tell um, you know the the creditors your your track records and it'll. Tell them your credit worthiness, whether uh, they should or should not, you know, give you a loan. So those are your five C's of credit. So in today's world, they say your credit is who you are. Let me change that a little bit. In today's financial world, uh, is it, the, the credit says who you are. You know, in the world, you could be a humble person, a, a good person or whatnot. Um, the lenders will not necessarily care about that uh, as much as they'll care about your character and whether you could pay them back. Um, so, so you are your credit when it comes to financial uh, institutions. Um, so that's, that's again why we're here, why we're here today. Moving on to the benefits of credit. Um, you know, there, there's a lot of, of benefits um, benefits to your credits. Um, you, you'll improve your loan chances. Um, you'll probably get better rates in comparison to uh, people who have lower scores than you. Um, in some cases, you can, you know, get certain jobs, especially when they're in the financial sector. Uh, for uh, you know, employers who are looking for that security. Um, in some cases, you'll you know find it easier to find uh, a place to live, renting an apartment, uh, or you'll you know you'll you'll get better uh, insurance rates, uh, extras, bonus points, miles, better rewards. A lot of credit cards will look uh, at your credit worthiness and will select the the range you go on, and so they'll they'll approve better rewards based on that. Um, so so really. Um, having good credit, uh, you know, opens many doors um, in terms of, of your monies and what you can do um, with that money. What are the different types of credits? Credit cards, revolving credit, um, that's, that's really the most common, right? Um, so, so you, you can apply for this, you can apply for them through, through your local banks. Um, you know, obviously first bank, we offer, uh, different variations of credit card business or, or, or personal. Um, but, uh, typically most banks will offer you that you could go through American express and, and, and whatnot and, uh, apply for, for these. Um, if you're just starting off, um, with your credit journey, it's likely that you are going to have a smaller balance. You might start with 500, um, you know, a $500 credit card or a $1,000 credit card. You probably won't start directly off with a $20,000 credit card. You really have to build up, uh, build up to, that, to that limit. Then there are the installment loans, You'll, you know, personal loans, auto loans, um, there are, again, various sizes of those. You can start with a, a small personal loan. Uh, there are starter, uh, starter loans for uh, people establishing or starting to establish their credit, um, which are, are very common. So you might want to just start with that if you're just starting off, um, just to start building that credit, okay? Then there are the long-term, uh, long-term loans. Right? Like you're talking about mortgages, which you know vary between 15 to to 30 years. Uh, same thing with student loans. Um, they they can vary. There, are, you know, some of us who have larger than uh, than other student loans, and um, and they they can be depending on your your payment plan, uh, anywhere ranging from five to 20, 30 years. So those are longer. Um, 
longer loans, right? Now we're moving on to establishing your credit. And if, if I'm going too fast, please somebody ask a question so that Sharika could interrupt me. <laughs> but uh, establishing your, um, your credit, um, you know, there, there are multiple ways, but you want to start with opening a bank account, um, ideally two bank accounts, a, a checking um, for your, your, your rotations, and then a, a savings uh, for your long-term uh, needs, your, your rainy day account or, uh, or your goals account and, and, and whatnot. So um, when we say open a bank account, really, really look for two, the checking and the savings. Um, and then handle that account responsibly. You don't want to go on overdraft. Um, so my philosophy is I, I check my accounts daily. Uh, that's probably the number three item on my list after I wake up. Um, and that's, that's really important. You want to make sure that as monies are, are coming in or getting out, that you're not, um, you're not in a jumble uh, with a, a zero or negative balance. So, so really open those accounts responsibly or, or handle these accounts responsibly, okay? Um, you also wanna apply for a credit card, uh, ideally two, um, two credit cards, but don't build your, your credit too quickly. That's, that's an error that most people uh, make when they're trying to establish their credit is they, is they go ahead and they apply for um, three, four or five credit cards all at, at the same time, assuming that it will, um, it will establish their credit faster. It's not. Um, and, and we're going to go over, over that in a little bit, but, um, you know, apply for, for two credit cards. Don't apply for them on the same day. Give, give a, a little, you know, period of time between the two, uh, you know, a month or two, uh, probably up to six months. Uh, to to apply for these credit cards um, and then also obtain a, a personal loan. Um, you know, ideally, again, those starter loans that we talked about um, the, in the past page, um, you know, there, there are some small loans for like 36 months, they're, they're shorter range. Um, and then if you have a, a, a mortgage or if you already have a, a student loan, those would be considered your, um, your long-term loan. And, and these four um, credit facilities are, are really going to uh, help you uh, establish that credit in the long run. Um, the 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 credit companies are going to look at these and make sure that you know you're you're uh, managing them correctly. Um, so so really, again, if I have to emphasize on anything, do not build your or try to build your credit too quickly by applying uh, for too many things at the same time. If you do have a credit history and you want to see, you know, where you stand, um, you know, uh, how to assess your credit report, um, everyone is entitled to a free copy of your, uh, your, your, your credit report uh, every 12 months um, by the three uh, major re reporting uh, credit agencies, Equifax, Experian, TransUnion. Um, so, so if you don't know, you know, what's, what's really making up your, uh, your credit report, uh, and your scores and, and whatnot, go ahead, apply for a free report. It'll tell you a detail of, of what's going on there. If you don't know how to, uh, how to apply for those, um, free reports, here you go. We can access them online. If you don't have online access, if you don't feel comfortable going online by phone, by mail, okay? You can, you can download the, um, the, the form uh, if you prefer um, through, through the, um, the online access, download the form, fill it out, send it out by the mail. 
um, and then uh, request for for that report right from from these uh, these institutions. It's it's very important that you know really what's going on and and what's the history. Make sure you don't have any fraudulent activity in the background that's really reducing your score. So here you go. I'm going to leave it on for two seconds just so that you can really see. Um, now, in terms of the access online, if you are having problems because your physical address is from the VI or whatnot, give them a call by phone. Um, they're, they're, they're really easy to access. You might be put on hold for, for, for a few, but um, it's worthwhile, okay? And this is the contact information for the, the three credit agencies in case you ever have to, um, to, to get uh, the reports for a fee because you're, you're really concerned or something's um, really messing around your your, your reports uh, and you want even more detail. These are the contact informations uh, for uh, for the different agencies. Equifax again, experience uh, and and TransUnion. All right, now back to the basics on how calculating your credit score. Calculating your, your credit score, understanding really what's going on. 35% um, of your credit score will be timeliness. Are you paying your debt on time? That's, and, and that's credit cards. That's your auto loan. That's your personal loan. That's your student loan. Uh, many of us took a break during COVID uh, from those student payments. And then suddenly October last year hit and we had to uh, go back and pay those student loans. I know that the government is trying to do a lot of things and trying to, to help. I was the first one in line trying to get that $20,000 um, uh, uh, forgiveness or $10,000, it, whatever it was. Um, but, you know, um, we, we want to make sure that our credit scores are, are, are continuously up they're not, you know, the government's not going to necessarily help your credit score by, by going back six months. So in the meantime, continue making those, um, those, those student loan payments, those auto loan payments, those personal loans, those mortgage, those credit card payments. Okay. Um, the next one is 30% um, is how much you use of your facilities. And, and that's really the credit cards, right? Um, if you have a fifty thousand dollar personal credit card. Um, don't 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 go up to the fifty thousand dollar credit limit unless you really have to, unless there's an emergency. Um, use thirty percent of that facility, or up to to thirty percent. Right. The 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 key number I think is um is ten to thirty percent of those those credit lines. Don't don't tap it up. Don't max it out. <clears throat> Number three, 15% is how long have you had history? Um, and, it, you know, some of us uh, started a little bit later than the others. Uh, it's not a race. Um, you know, I happen to have gone into a Macy's store uh, in my 20s, and somebody asked me if I wanted a Macy's credit card, and that's how I started my, uh, my credit history. Uh, yes, I still have that card. Um, I probably buy a pair of shoes just to have some kind of activity on that card uh, once every three to six months, uh, if need be, uh, just to make sure that I have the ability, but I do pay it before the due date, right? You want to make sure that, that you pay those down again back to timeliness. Um, so, so the longer you have credit cards, um, you know, active, keep them active, right? You don't have to, uh, because you're not using these credit cards, you don't have to cancel your, your, your card. Just probably put some uh, small recurring payments, whether it's your, your Netflix bill or your, uh, your utility bill or whatnot, uh, put them on and then pay them down before the, the due date so that you're, you're using them and, and it shows good, good credit um, history. Um, then it's, um, the types of credit being used, uh, that's, that's important. You know, there's, there's a lot of places that offer, 
uh, credit cards and stuff like that. You can have like five personal loans, but if you don't have a good variety, um, that, that also tells um, a story. So make sure you have a good diversity uh, between, between your, your types of credits being used. And finally, 10% is uh, recent search for credit cards. So earlier we talked about building your credit too quickly, establishing your credit too quickly. Um, so that's, that's, you know, that's part of that, right? So you don't want to apply for a personal loan, an auto loan, a credit card, or three credit cards all within the same month or, 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 or you know, three, five, six months, right? Give some time in between uh, because every time you apply for a new facility, that institution is going to, uh, to request a credit, right? A, a credit search or credit, um, you know, they, they want to know what's going on. So every time that happens, it, it goes on your report. Um, so, so really, you know, be conscious of those, uh, those top five, the 35%, again, timeliness, 30%, how much is in use? So that 30%, keep that in mind. I want to just use 30% of my line of credit, of my credit card, unless there's an emergency. Length of credit history, the more time you have positive credit history, the more it benefits you in the long run. Okay, 10%, again, variety, what types of credit are being used, and finally, the 10%, the recent searches. Repairing your credit, identifying the key items on your credit report. What are they? Your credit score. So, you, you know, what is the credit score versus the credit report? Our top um, our top item is, is FICO, right? So FICO, people ask the difference. What is FICO? What's the difference between FICO and your credit report? Um, well, the credit report is a detailed report of your credit history, what's going on there. Um, your FICO score, on the other hand, um, that is a numerical representation of your credit worthiness, right? It's calculated from the different reports, the three different Equifax, TransUnion, um, and, um, and Experian, okay? So, so FICO was actually um, created by Fair Isaac Corporation. Um, and, you know, it, it wants to make sure it, it taps into a, to, to the three of them to, to calculate that, that FICO score. And sometimes you might wonder, hey, you know, um, why is my FICO score uh, at this bank or when I did that application a little bit different from, from the other? There are multiple FICO scores. If I'm not mistaking, um, the FICO score ranges from FICO 2 to FICO 8, 9, and 10. Um, the most used FICO score is FICO 8 um, when you're applying for credit cards and stuff like that. But um, but FICO 2, I think, is used mostly for when you're applying for auto loans. And I think FICO 4, 5, and 6 is used when you're uh, applying for, uh, for mortgages, right? So, so, so they, they're a little bit intertwined, but, um, but they, they vary a little bit. And you've probably also heard about your Vantage score. Now, that one was, um, was done in, uh, I think, created in, in 2006. Uh, by the, the the credit reporting companies, it's not as popular yet. Uh, I don't know if it ever will be as the FICO score, but it you know it it goes on the same range. It's uh, it's very similar, um, but uh, but but you don't hear about it as often. Okay. All right. Now, for those of you who want to repair your credit, that's, you know, that, that, that's a big one. You know, you want to correct errors. You want to make sure by, by reading your, uh, your credit report um, that there are, you know, no fraudulent activity. And if there is, try to remove them. And I'll, I'll touch 
I'll touch a little bit more on, on that in a moment, how to correct those errors. Um, you know, remove these, these items if you can. Um, and and there's, there's, there's ways to do this, okay? But you could catch yourself if, if you realize, oh man, I have a really bad, uh, a really bad score or I want it to be better. Um, you know, it's not all lost. Um, you could start paying your bills on time, pay down your debt, pay down your credit cards, and then make, you know, make your monthly payments on time every time. Um, one, one late payment usually equates to 11 on time payments. So you want to make sure you're always paying on time. Don't, don't keep, um, don't keep a, a large balance, if any balance by your, by your due dates, right? Um, what, what I try to do is, um, make sure I, I pay my, my bills on time, uh, monthly. So make sure, you know, when you receive your statement, um, when is, when is the due date? Pay it by the due date. Um, it, that's, that's a given it'll save you, it'll save you money too. Um, you know, you won't be paid, you won't be charged these interest fees or these late, uh, penalty charges. So, so paying on time, repairing your credit, obtain that secure credit card. If you don't have it, um, that's, that's a, that's a big one. Obtain it if you don't have it. Or, you know, if you do have the, the, the credit card, apply for a, a small, a small loan, starter loan, um, a small personal loan. You don't necessarily need to have a reason for that, that small loan. Um, but if you, if you know you could pay it on time, if you have a plan, get a, a 36 month uh, small loan for a small amount of money um, and then pay it timely every month and, and, and whatnot. It, it will help build your credit. Um, and then for, for those who are parents or guardians uh, and you have youth who are reaching the age of 16, 17, I'm not you know, recommending any, any younger than that. Um, but if you, if you want your, your, your children to, to start that path of, of good credit worthiness, um, you know, they're, they're old enough, make them an authorized user, make sure you're paying that payment on time. Um, you know, you need six months to, to really start establishing so that when they're 18 years old, um, they can go to a, a lending facility, apply for their first credit card, and they can start building their credit, um, their their credit pretty young, right? So, so really, that last piece, obtain an authorized or or become an authorized user on a card. That's that's really for for those young folks out there uh, who are starting to you know uh, walk that path. They're they're going into adulthood and and they they, they want to um, to start building their credit. Um, so, I, I mean, you know, I say that, but it's, it's really good for, for anyone, but, but make sure that it, they're not a detriment. If, if you are the primary card holder, make sure that these individuals understand that, uh, you are helping them, not necessarily giving them the, the, the in for that $50,000 credit that you might have on your credit card. Okay. So, so you, you want to make sure that, that they're, they're well-educated, um, with, with your expectations. Now going on to correcting and cleaning up your credits. Okay. Um, you may have some, you know, you, when, once you receive your, your credit report once a year, uh, and you've investigated it by yourself and you see a couple of accounts that, uh, are damaging uh, your your credit report, um, you know, you can go ahead and challenge that. Uh, my advice is uh, do an investigation first. Don't don't go in and say, hey, this is a, a fraudulent account and and whatnot. Just make sure that you know you contact um, the, the the agencies and request an inve an investigation of of 
um, of that account um, by by you know doing this uh, 100 word statement. You know, provide your your name, your date of birth, your social security, you know, your mailing address, and and, and whatnot. Um, but again, do the investigation first because if it turns out that um, this this fraudulent or 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 what you may deem fraudulent uh, account um, is verified. I think they do three checks um, on on these uh, these accounts, and if those three checks match your description, um, it's likely that they're going to keep that that account uh, on your um, your your report. Um, you know, for, for a longer period of time uh, without discharging it. So, so again, do the investigation. You could ask for a second, uh, a second round of investigation if, if need be with more details, and then you can, you know, dispute it a little bit more. Um, that's, that's, you know, if ever you have a case where you're not really sure what's going on there. <clears throat> As you're repairing your credit, you need to develop a new perspective of your credit. Understand who you are, you know, uh, understand who you are. What kind of credits do you have? Um, you, you need to, to if, if you're the kind of person who goes, you know what, um, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to pay that bill tomorrow, and then you're, you're forgetful. Uh, put those on auto pay. Um, I'm one of those people. I um, I tend to forget. I, I put too many things on my plate. Uh, and then uh, Friday comes and I forgot to pay my bill on time. And then I go home and the lights are out. Um, so I've developed this technique, which is available for everybody. If the company does it, auto pay. Auto pay on your credit cards, at least a minimum balance. Auto pay on your utilities if you can. Um, that's, I mean, if you know, do it. You know, if you have the discipline, all the better for you. Um, I, I, I just, I'm talking out of experience, so I, I'm not, I'm not that. I guess as discipline, I do have my my logbook, but um, <laughs> make those auto payments. We talked about the benefits of credit. Now let's talk about the cost of credit. Cost of credit, higher interest rates, finance charges, penalty fees, interests, all of these come through cost of credit. You also lose a lot of opportunities. Um, you might have an emergency, your car broke down, the mechanic told you he can't repair it. And then you have to go look for that car. Guess what? Bad credit, you're probably going to be declined. So uh, build that credit if you can. Do it today. Start today. Don't build too fast. Okay? So the cost of credit comes, you know, you have those bad days and you're like, ah, car broke down. I have to go look for a loan. And... Bank tells you no. So, um, so we want to make sure that this doesn't happen to you. Uh, we also want to make sure that if you do have good credit, you want to build up on that score so that when you go to the bank, you're getting the best rate in comparison to your payer at this point in time. Yes, the uh, the market right now, you'll tell me uh, it's not the same as you know buying a car or getting a house. Uh, as 10 years ago, yes, we understand that, but better, better scores, better rates in comparison to someone who may not have the same rates as you, okay? And somebody might ask, what are those prepaid finance charges? Prepaid finance charges, when you're applying again for those loans, for those mortgages, blah, blah, blah. Those are your origination fees, your underwriting fees, those document fees. So those, those are all of the things that, that come through 
um, when you're, you're applying for certain credits. So not necessarily always for a personal loan, but uh, depending on the type of credit that you're looking for, th these might come up. So no, 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 um, you know, again, your conditions that we talked about in the first slide. Conditions, again, I think that was our third C of credit. The cost of your credit, what about rates? Are you going to be charged a fixed rate or a variable rate? What's, what's the difference? Fixed rate, right? It stays the same for the term of the loan. You have a five-year personal loan, a five-year car loan, and they tell you that the rate is I don't know, 3%, 8%, 12%. It's staying the same for those five years, okay? Variable rates though, you'll see that mostly on credit cards. It fluctuates over time uh, based on your market conditions. So right now we're seeing our market conditions are not the greatest. You know, the news said inflation, inflation, inflation. Um, so, you know, it's, it's likely that, uh, rates are probably not going to go down right away. Um, so, so those variable rates might stay high. Um, if you have a good credit score though, you can check what your rate is, your APR on your little credit card, uh, statement, it'll tell you 15% or 25% really depends. But as you build your 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 credit, um, your credit, right, and you you build that score, um, if you have, let's say, an an exceptional score that's you know eight eight hundred or 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 more, um, you could you could challenge if you have a seven fifty versus what you had last year. Maybe it was six fifty last year. You you repaired it. And now you're at 750 or you know 785 or, or or whatnot. Anything better, you could call your credit card companies and ask them to reduce the rates. Okay, they might tell you no, but what's the risk of calling and asking? Okay, and be wary of those teaser rates. Teaser rates sometimes. Um, you'll get in the mail. Uh, I get a lot. I get a lot. I get I get mail from uh, Discovery, Mastercard, Amex, different you know banks. Hey, apply for the card. Teaser rate zero percent, APR, and then in fine line they say for the next six months. What does that mean? That means for six months, you could you know tap your limit zero percent. You won't get charged. But once that seven month hit, you haven't paid down that credit card, guess what? They'll hit you with that fee. And then what? Okay, so be careful about those teaser rates. Okay. Ah, the effects of credit management. Well, you will face risk if you have not managed those credit risk uh, quite very well. So uh, we've talked about that, right? Um, when when you really need it, when you really need it, let's say, hey, you know, I don't have a credit card. I I I need to go and pay some medical bills. Maybe I have insurance, but the the deductible I have to pay that. I don't have that in my savings account. I need a personal personal loan. I need to apply for a credit card. If you don't have good credit, you can't apply for that. And then and then the the, the hospital, whatever it might be, you know, it, it could be that you really want to go see your grandkids and you have to travel to somewhere, whether it's Europe or the States or South America or wherever it might be, to go visit your family. Maybe it's the trip of a lifetime. Um, so, so if you need a personal loan for something like that, if you need a credit card with travel miles and you go apply and you get declined, um, that's the risk of bad credit. Okay. Um, the banks, the banks will share information about your poor credit ha habits to the various, uh, credit reporting agencies. And that all builds up, that all builds up to, uh, 
to your 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 um your credit report and then it trickles down to your scores your uh your vintage and your fico scores okay so so be careful be careful with that and if you don't manage your finances well now let's say uh over the years you've 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 built your credit your credit quite well and you started with a thousand dollar credit card cash rewards and everything next year or six months after you've asked for a credit limit or a credit increase by thousand subsequently after that um you know ten thousand twenty thousand and then just remember that money is not necessarily yours right if you can't pay it it's not your money you're lending or you're you're borrowing uh that money from a lender um, and at some point it, it will become due. So, um, so, so make sure you manage your finances, you manage your, your accounts, uh, your loans, your, your credit cards, uh, very well. Remodeling a poor credit history. So like the, 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 the previous slide said, all is not lost. You have to know who you are. I think I mentioned that a, a little bit earlier. Know who you are. Um, I I told you my little dark secret. I forget to uh, pay bills if if I get overwhelmed. So uh, so that's that's a big one. But you know we we we're human. We all have a, a weakness. Are you an impulse buyer? Hey, sometimes we love going on Amazon. Um, I told you about my little Macy's credit card. Um, and, and every once in a while I'll, I'll buy myself a new pair of shoe and find the excuse that I needed to go running. And that pair of shoe stays in the closet for a whole year. Um, so, so understand what your impulses are, you know, it might be, uh, it might be going out, um, to the local pub. It might be going out for, uh, sushi dinner with, 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 with your loved ones, you know, or friends. Um, so, so identify the root of your problem. What, what are your, your, your spending impulses? Uh, and try every time it comes up, say, ha, I, I got you, you know, let, let me, let me try to do a little bit more. That doesn't mean stay home. That doesn't mean don't go shopping. It just means make sure that if you go shopping, if you go out, go, go and, and, and spend what you can afford. Okay. So that you could pay it off by the due date at the end of the month. Do you rationalize yourself saying you only live once? Man, this morning, probably two hours ago, I yelled YOLO down the hall. I I do that sometimes. Man, it, it happens. It's Friday. Why don't we, you know, why don't we go for a drink? Um, that drink turns into uh two or three. And then you you continue you 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 know you give your credit card out and then it 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 um you know it 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 adds right and so um so 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 you want to make sure right that that the root of your problems which might be shopping might be going out for a nice dinner might be traveling uh, make sure you can pay it off uh, again at that due date. So that's all under the same team, uh, and I know that I'm I'm starting to run out of time, uh, <laughs> but I, I guess I'm liking what I'm talking about, right? So that's that same team. Know know what 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 you are what you are buying, what you're spending money on, um, and 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 delve a plan um, into what you should uh, you should do, right? So that you don't don't exceed. Set yourself some goals. Set yourself some goals. I do that. I have my little, I have my little blue book, um, that I, you know, tap in my goals every, every, you know, day. Sometimes every month, long-term goals, you know, every six months. Um, make sure you know your goals. You know, it doesn't have to be your your educational goals only or your your life achievement goals. It it could be your financial goals. Where do you want to be? What kind of score you want to see? What kind of um, finance picture do you want to see in a year, six months, five years from now? Okay, put them put them in writing. It sticks. It sticks longer than just thinking about them.
Now, I think this is my last slide, and I think this is my favorite slide. It's my favorite slide because um, it, it has color. Uh, most of all, though, it's, um, it's, it's how to manage your finances, which will delve into your, your, your credit, right? When you're spending money, when you're earning money, make sure that you use a formula similar to this, right? Most people will say, my needs are 50%. The rest, you know, the rest, pay yourself first, right? Before you, you put uh, your wants, put your 20% into your goals after your needs, okay? It might not look the same for everyone. It might be 75% uh, needs for others. Um, you know, it might be 25% needs, um, you know, if, if, if you're lodging and your, your food is being paid by, uh, by someone, Okay, so 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 the picture is just a very general picture. Um, so so don't don't hold it to um, you know don't don't hold it and assume that everybody's following that rule. Um, but but find find something that works for you. But always 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 before you put your stuff your 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 money into your wants, make sure your bills are paid on time. And make sure you always put a little bit for a rainy day. It could be $10 this week. It could be 100 next week, okay? Build it up. Build your retirement accounts. Build your investment accounts. Build for something that you want to build for yourself in the future, okay? Put your wants. We're, we're YOLO, right? So put your wants at some point, but make sure it doesn't overshadow paying your 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 loans paying your credit card debt uh and putting some money aside for the future establish a budget so here's the summary i'm not going to go over it again because uh i know that my time's up uh there might be some questions i hope there are some questions um i know i didn't cover everything um but again i'm going to just go through it real quick you know, don't mismanage your credit, improve your credit, build up your credit, don't build it up too quick. Um, you can obtain your free credit reports every 12 months, correct or dispute any errors, ask for an, uh, an investigation um, first, you know, understand what, what that, that uh, negative uh, error might be, okay? But you can remove Negative information after seven years, ask for it. You know, avoid being a guarantor um, on a loan that you know you you have no. Don't don't be a co-signer. For example, if a friend asks you to uh, you know be a co-signer on their car, they wreck the car, they stop making payment. That's gonna go on your credit score. Okay, so be careful when um, when being asked to be a guarantor to 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 do it a certain way okay uh avoid uh allowing unauthorized users do it responsibly okay to do it responsibly don't necessarily avoid it do it responsibly okay improper handling of credit results uh in products and services costing more again manage your wants limit options and ability hamper <laughs> Um, it might hamper, bad credit score might hamper your, your, your ability to start a business. Again, that, that little 20% goals, build, build, build. And if you have a dream to start your own business at some point and you need to, you know, inject some monies when you're asking for that small business loan, um, you know, that, that will come in useful, okay? Five C's of credit. And then finally, um, you know, I think it's the same thing, but it affects your cash flow and hampers the ability to serve and invest more for the future. So again, goals, goals, goals. Put a little bit into your savings. Make sure that you retain those five C's of credit. Make sure that you have the capital if you ever um, you know, need to make a down payment on a home, if you need to invest uh, in your small business or your already established business, Make sure you have that credit for that. Make sure you have 
uh, the capital for that build a little bit, make sure you write down your goals. Thank you so much to everyone. I hope you have questions. Thank you for that presentation. While we give four sins a chance to place their questions in the chat, because I don't see anyone. You did an outstanding job. Wow. Oh, I'm out of breath. <laughs> <laughs> okay, so we'll give persons time to place the questions in the chat. Or if you want to ask directly, just go ahead and raise your hand and then we can unmute you so you can ask directly. Now, what I'm going to do is, um, I, I know it's, it might be out of term, but if somebody wants to ask a question, uh, separately, I know um, some people might might be here. I'm gonna give you guys my my email um, address um, from First Bank. You guys could jot it down. If you guys have any questions um, about repairing your credit, improving your credit, uh, if you have any questions about you know anything uh, finance related, uh, it's Pearl P E A R L dot Spensley. S P E N C E L E Y at firstbankvi.com. Uh, ask me questions. I'm pretty responsive. Okay, I don't see any questions. I was able to put that in the chat. Actually, we have one more question. Okay. Well, we question. It's our first one. What is a good credit card for persons who have no credit to credit history to start to build credit? Uh, you know, that that's a good question. Um, I, I don't know if there's a good credit card per se, but definitely a, a credit card that does not have fees. You know, there do your research uh, in terms of of what you want. Right. There are some um, there's there, there are some starter cash reward credit cards where, you know, you could go shopping and you earn like two to three uh, percent. Um, you know, there, there's others. I know first bank offers, uh, some, some, I think they have cash, cash rewards. I, I don't know about some other local banks, but, um, but I know that some institutions, American express, they will, um, offer credit cards. And then on the fine line, there's, you know, at an annual fee. Sometimes it's $50, sometimes it's more. And you are going to have to, to, to pay for that, right? So make sure when you're applying uh, for your credit cards, again, those terms and conditions, make sure you're not applying for a first-time credit card that has these annual fees um, so that you can make sure you, 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 you know, get to that 30% of, of what they're offering. So if it's, if it's a $1,000 credit card, um, you know, don't go to the thousand uh, as you're building your credit, um, you know, pay up to make sure you, you spend maybe up to $300 or, or, or less, uh, and then pay, pay that $300 by, by the due date. I hope that helped. There's another one. What is a reasonable amount for a personal loan? For a first time borrower with no credit? Uh, you know, I, I think it really depends, right? Um, we talked about uh, that rainy day fund um, and how much you, you're, you're making. Um, some, some people, believe it or not, um, are, are making hundreds of thousands of dollars uh, a year um, and, and they have no credit. They have no credit history. So these, you know, you, you may be able to apply for a larger personal loan. It depends on your your personal um, your, your 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 personal status, right? Um, I recommend if you're just building it, a couple thousand, a thousand, two thousand here or there. It, it should be fine, and make sure that it's you know under five years. Um, you're you're going to do that now. Now don't expect that um, to to establish your credit right away, right? Uh, loans are not the same as credit cards. Credit cards, you see a more, um, a, a quicker uh, uh, turnover of, uh, of the credit. Loans, it, you don't really see that much of an effect until about 90%. So that's why it's so important to have a starter loan um, so that, you know, closer to that third year, um, now you're really going to see that positively affect your, um, your scores, 
Um, so, so, so make sure you, you pay on time. And I want to reemphasize something I said in the, the middle of that presentation, uh, one late payment equates to 11 on time payments. So make sure you always pay on time. If you know, you're going to, um, to be late, just like me, auto pay, auto pay. Okay, so I guess that's it on questions. I guess we can go ahead to the next slide. I don't right. see any, but if you do have, you can go ahead and start typing them. We'll still acknowledge them. That, that is actually my last slide, Sharika. Oh boy. Okay, so I guess I'll go ahead and let everyone know that the VISBDC has so much more in store for USBI small businesses. You can visit our website at www.visbdc.org. Download the VISBDC app on your mobile device from the appropriate app store. Like and follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, Google Business, and you can subscribe to the VISBDC YouTube channel for new uploads of our on-demand webinars. Let me let you guys know a few trainings that we have on our training portal that you have access to. We have on-demand trainings in terms of business developing a business plan. We had First Bank. They presented on understanding personal and business credit. Coming up on the 19th, I'm sorry, coming up on the 24th, we have two trainings. We have one online that continues the financial literacy series. It's going to be Small Business Accounting 101 with Merchants Commercial Bank. And we also have in person, the SBA presenting on disaster preparedness. That session is going to be here at the VI SBDC Center on the UVI campus. On the 26th, we have First Bank back again, and they're going to be presenting on the fundamentals of business credit. So you don't want to miss that. And that basically sums up our financial literacy month series. We do have trainings coming up in May, but you can go ahead and check our platforms so you can see what's coming. And so once again, I want you to look out for an email. I encourage you to take a, sh a, a short survey that lets us know how we're doing. And we're gonna attach a copy of today's presentation there as well. So to our first band team, we thank you guys for collaborating on us to bring this information to the general public along with our small business owners and entrepreneurs. Thank you everyone for your time and attendance. And on behalf of the entire VISBDC network, once again, we appreciate you being here with us and get, getting this information. And we wish, wish you a productive weekend. So thank you, everyone. Thank you all.